And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, we are definitely going to talk about NVIDIA because they've unveiled their 1660. But how does it work in Linux? Let's find out about that And Google is releasing. A game console? Question mark. Better know what it runs. Jason Evangelo asks, can you survive six months solely on Linux? The answer is only if you fully kill your Windows using self. And sweaty dwarves are waiting for you in their fortress, now on Steam. Valve attempts a new review system, and people are already up in arms. And the XVK 101 is out, bringing some nice improvements for newer games. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, how's everyone doing this fine Saturday night? I am Old Man Vin, and that is one stretching swing. Back from Freedom Land in... Um, Communist Canadian Kanakistan? Is that a good so, 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 Soviet Canada. Soviet Canada. <laughs> and Britannia. The Brexican Hello. himself. One Pedro Mateus. I'm trying to piss everybody off, man. That's the goal. Um, you joining us live at uh, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form that last little bit. It's Cocaine Voltron. See, I mean, pissing off YouTube. Before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Uh, what's up, lads? Jordan, you probably have the most to tell us. Yeah, I mean. I, I I talked a lot about my experiences coming back uh, from the land of the free and the home of the brave on the pre pre super session. So if you're not a Patreon and you want to hear that story, uh, you should totally become a Patreon and go listen to that show. Um, yeah, I'm apartment hunting now. That that that's always the fun process of like if you go in the MLS, they're like I'm I'm looking for a two bedroom place. I want I want a separate room to like so I can soundproof it, set up a studio, all that crap. Mm -hmm. Um, and so many of these units are listed as having one above board, one below board room. And they just have the one room when you show up and it's like, <laughs> why are you wasting my fucking time? What did you expect <laughs> to happen? I come to this place and like, I asked for two bedrooms, but this is just such a nice place that I'm only going to, I'm just going to spoon with whoever I'm going to be sharing the unit with. Right. So they say they have two rooms available, but one's full. No, there's just one room. You can't get them for false advertisements. I don't think the MLS falls under that. Because mm. it's it's like a realtor thing, right? So I, right. Don't, I don't know. Maybe. So mm. what are they called? Like the living room or room? May, maybe, but like, then just call it a den. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's fucking stupid. And I, I, I just, I, A, I want to find a new place to live. B, I want there to be fiber. And see if I, I, I'm I'm at, I'm at peace with the fact that I'm gonna have to like blow two grand a month on month on rent now if I want to like live anywhere convenient. Welcome to Toronto, ladies and gentlemen, boys and oh, girls. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> of cheap places to live, how's Cambridge? Uh, not particularly cheap, but yeah, <laughs> I've been uh, going around and well, today I pulled the uh, old motherboard, the Sabertooth 990 FX out and I cleaned it and I made it look all pretty and I tested it and it booted and it posted just fine. So it's like, oh, I, there's a couple of 970s that are pretty cheap on eBay. I'll, let me bet on a couple of those. Mm. See if I got a cheap 970. <laughs> not bad. Um... I'm playing around with enlightenment because long reasons. <laughs> you wonder, I'm trying to squeeze the most I can out of the 1700 because it looks like we're going to have to like legitimately adult and build a workstation to make a thing do that we need it to do. Um, and we know how much I love burning cash. So stay tuned for moaning and bitching about that in the upcoming months. <laughs> but something that doesn't <laughs> typically moan and bitch because it's dead, Jordan. It's dead. I mean, you th you think so, but it makes some weird noises when you slap it a bunch. It's the Steam Linux Updates of the Week. So, unlikely source of news, uh, Notebook Check. Uh, that's a website I follow because I like laptops. It's my thing. And I saw this uh, this article come up and I, I had to go on discord and ask someone else to put it in the notes for me because work doesn't you know like google drive but it's uh yeah the the article is just called intel maintains massive lead over amd in steam survey for processors in both windows and linux D yeah you don't say <laughs> so after 10 years of bulldozer 
it doesn't really happen, you know, that fast. But yeah, no, um, there was a bit of a hike uh, over on the Linux side. Uh, it was not 0.42% less uh, Intel processors and not 0.42% not more AMD processors. So I guess Ryzen is doing something, at least for the Linux community, even if it's a teeny tiny little fraction. But yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. That's to be expected, I guess. Listen, Pedro, <laughs> Pedro, people don't build new computers every two years. I, I, you see, you, you, you say that, but I know some people. Um, As someone yeah. getting ready to there build a second computer people. in two years, nope, doesn't happen. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I mean, yeah, AMD CPUs getting traction in Linux is kind of a big duh. I mean, a lot of Linux users use their computers for other things other than playing games, and you sometimes you want a lot of cores, and mm -hmm. AMD mm -hmm. provides that for relatively cheap. Uh, I mean, yeah. Don't who you doesn't think like a... maybe if we're being honest about it, if you look at AMD hasn't really had a viable... Now, both of us, you're coming from a Thuban. I mean, Pedro, you had a, what, 80... Excavator. 8370E. And I had an yeah, th 80... I th yeah that, that was Excavator. We were edge cases. Yeah. AMD fanboys, whatever, I know. Uh, but Intel has <laughs> had the gaming market on lock for the better part of seven years. So, yeah, there's probably yeah. more. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I know I'm I'm really trying to not drool while I stare at that Ryzen 3700 that's going to be coming out. I, I, I want that 12, 12 core, 24 thread goodness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I want that 3700X. Come July, I'm buying one of those. Remains to be seen whether or not I'll need a new motherboard. I desperately uh, want something that's roughly the same speed, but 60 PCI lanes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, it turns out that although it's, Valve has fired a large swath of their VR department, at least they remembered to commit their code before they left. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, there's an update for Steam VR. This is update number 1.3.8. And lo and behold, there's some uh, there's some Linux updates here. Um, they fixed a hang when the system's under load and the mirror window view is visible, which is handy if you want to watch have people watch while you're playing uh, your VR game. And uh, they reduced the VR compositor CPU usage, which is nice. Nice. And now a lot, a lot of the times uh, when you're playing VR under Linux, you're just doing it under Proton through Steam Play. And I know I speak speaking of like new houses. I know Empty bought a unit recently, so we get we gotta get him back on after he after he gets every his Vive and everything set up because I want mm -hmm. I want to I want to do a Steam VR under Linux segment part two one year later sort of thing. Hmm. Yeah, no, Proton definitely brought a hell of a lot more uh, VR games to Linux than some way or another so yeah that would be actually very nice to hear about <laughs> indeed it's vr man um <sighs> there, you know you know what uh, we talk a lot of shit but there are some genuinely fun vr games out there and yeah it, the, 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 this is this we're, we're forever stuck in this intermediate step where the technology is going to get cheaper, but for in 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 ten years, it's going to be like, oh man, AR, VR, whatever, whatever, whatever comes out of this era will be the new hotness, and we'll be like, can you can you imagine using Waz and a mouse to fucking interact with your games? What what amateur hour is this? <laughs> we probably have another decade if it continues on, but I think AR is probably going to be a thing, not VR. Yeah, de 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 definitely mixed reality has yeah. a lot more uh, going for it. Mm. Um, but it's it's gonna need a very good mobile connection, which you probably don't have, right, Pedro? <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so yeah. Speaking of uh, connections, well, uh, the Steam Link beta uh, has been updated, and the new build provides the Steam Link anywhere, which, uh, as the name implies, it lets you connect. Say you take your Steam Link with you while you go somewhere, and you plug it in. And now it can access your computer after you've done the little bit of a pairing process. Um, and in theory, it should let you, if you're on the Steam client beta and you're on the Steam link beta, uh, you should be able to stream from your computer, even if it's not on the same network like it was before. So that's interesting. But uh, the little caveat is that it only works from a PC that's running Steam to the Steam Link or the Steam Link app, like say your phone or a Chromebook or a tablet or whatever. I, I mean, that makes it's... sense. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I was, I was, I was actually going to bring this up. Uh, I, I think, I think Ven actually posted this in, mm-hmm. in Discord, or I saw, I saw it on Twitter or something. Probably, probably both. But yeah, so someone, someone went and beat the first that tutorial boss for uh, Dark Souls Three uh, using the app. Yep. Um, the, the, the main, the other main caveat here is that hey, you're going to need a hell of good upload speed. Which you know, if mm-hmm. you're like me and you live in Soviet Canada, you don't get because freaking big telco doesn't want you to have it. Um, and the other thing too, is you're, you're going to need, um, a decent, uh, decent mobile plan with some good data, which again, in Soviet Canada, big telco does not want you to have. <laughs> I think this is yeah. probably going to fall squarely into kind of like when the app first came out on mobile, I went out, I was excited for 30 minutes while I installed it, tried it, went, that's neat. And uninstalled it, realizing I'll never use this. That, that was neat to play around with. <laughs> However, uh, I think this is good to lay the groundwork for the upcoming Steam all-you-can-eat Netflix-style streaming service. Right, and you know, g- given what we're going to be talking about later in the news segment, it's probably mm. good that mm-hmm. Valve is trying to angle themselves to be a competitor. But you, but one, one of the things that you brought up uh, when you were trying the uh, Assassin's Creed thing then was like, there's clearly some input prediction going on, especially over a controller. So I wonder what's going on sort of on the back end with that for the uh, Steam Stream Anywhere thing. Oh, what was it? Um, <laughs> you, 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 yeah, exactly. Well, you know, you're, 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 you're talking about how, um, you know, when you try to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey with like the keyboard and mouse oh, through right, Project right. Stream, mm-hmm. like there, you, you, there was clearly some input prediction happening that just wasn't happening on the keyboard. Oh, right. Um, and I'm I'm cu- I'm curious if there's like something similar implemented for the stream anywhere stuff. There has to be. Simply, I mean, if you're dealing with a really really good mobile connection, you dozens of milliseconds. So mm-hmm. yeah, at least fifty. Yeah, right here. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I have not played with it, nor do I have any desire to. But I'm. It's a thing that I'm glad that's there. It's neat. <laughs> My poor mobile plan won't take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Steamworks SDK 1.44, uh, new networking APIs. It's kind of the new hotness and all that. But Valve is something they've always done is they've done their best to take care of developers. And one of the things they're bringing with this is encrypted end-to-end UDP. It's not traversal is one of the things that no one wants to do, but everyone should. Just having that this is huge. I mean, it's kind of what that 30% cut or whatever it is uh, goes towards. And it's good to see. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Yeah. No, um, this, uh, this was what the partner API update was a while back. That there was that Steam client update, just like partner API. This as most people suspected, is exactly what uh, Valve was doing. Just letting everyone have access to their back end and making that uh, available to game developers who want to use the Steam servers and they don't have to rely on third-party devices since they're already relying on Steam. That's really nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, like, the, and you know, people, co- developers sometimes complain about the um, the 30% cut that Valve is taking, but this is, like, a hell of a value add, right? Like, oh, you're, yeah. you're, fun- you're funding quite a, lo- quite a bit of development and infrastructure investment that you can directly take advantage of. Uh, plus it's open source too. Um, and I mean, at this point, no one's surprised given that Valve's been releasing open source software left and right, uh, specifically targeted at developers to make game, uh, development more easily, easy and more standardized. Like the, the steam VR input thing was specifically targeted at ensuring that regardless of how, whatever VR device you're using, you will have a consistent API to utilize, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. So it, it it it's re- it's really good that this is usable even even like even if you're using the open source Steam Sockets API you still get a bunch of this stuff you just don't get the uh, you don't necessarily get access to the edge servers because you got to give Valve their uh, ducats for that but still it's good to have good on them hey what do you what do we think about the uh, kerfuffle with Epic going uh, maybe we want to take a look at this file in the Steam folder here and get a little data. <laughs> yeah, looking at the uh, local config VDF file. Yeah. Did you see that? <laughs> the, 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 this, this is why you run SC Linux, so that programs I, can only access shit the way they're supposed to. I saw the, I posted this on Reddit. I took the screenshot because Sweeney chimed in on Reddit. Uh-huh. And he's like, no, we do not 
analyze this file, we only get your friends list. Then another person rolled in and said, well, how come this other person from Epic knew the percentile of people who had Steam installed and only played for a certain amount of hours? Because that data is kind of only contained in that file that you guys mm -hmm. said that you don't do the thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it, yeah. It, it, Valve wasn't happy sketchy. about that. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Right. Um, speaking speaking of open source, uh, there's here's something from Feral that is not 100 percent Steam related, but still semi Steam related. Game mode um, is a demon that Feral uh, released to sort of do a lot of the pre environment config that one might need to do to you know play games, switching the CPU governors to performance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, they have a new version. This is 1.3. The big thing here is that once you start up the game, it'll disable the X screensaver, which is problematic Ooh. if you're playing with a controller, uh, because uh, you're, yeah, it, it, it takes a bit of the Russian roulette out of it. Um, <laughs> it tells me who's a decent developer or not. I mean, right, right. Um, they're 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 also they're also trying to uh, do some configuration tuning for AMD. They're they're very quick to say this is experimental. Use it at your own risk, because you know Farrell's history with AMD is fraught with uh, trials mm -hmm. and tribulations. Um, but you know, at, at least, at least they're still making the attempt, which, you know, credit where credit is due. Um, they're, they're, they also hook into the supervisor D API. Um, so, uh, the, so you can just like, so games themselves can just make a IPC call to uh super to uh game mode and say like, Hey, I'm, I'm a game turn on game mode. Outside of your like, laptop. Yeah. Do you ever mess around with game mode? I haven't. I mean, uh, my I've, governors I've, are always slammed to perform i mean because yeah. i don't use everything is on performance scaling, right yeah gpu cpu everything is on performance all the damn time and, and by the screen saver I mean, is disabled yeah, space heater mode yeah yeah <laughs> yeah like well i mean i mean person. yeah i mean let's face it gaming pcs are really just fancy space computers that play computer games that, that's it this is true yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh that's the thing good on you phil good on you uh but Valve is not done cocking around with things. No, Pedro. no, they're not. There were actually a lot of uh, Steam updates this week, and this one is actually a bit of a blog, and they're going back to revisit the Steam reviews. And we've heard all about the Steam reviews and how some people think they're great and how some people think that they're a great way to, you know, show your discontent with a certain developer because of a certain change that they made to the game or something surrounding the game and review bombing the shit out of it. And one of the things that Valve points out in their little QA is that, um, well, if you have um, the, like... People brought up the issue um, in the comments because... <laughs> no, I just... First comment, Valve is committing fraud. And pissing in our face. <laughs> well, th those... There are those comments. <laughs> but Don't this th one is... <laughs> Pedro, that comment's not real. Jordan told me re doesn't exist. <laughs> Oh, it does. Uh, uh, okay. But no, uh, the things that people were mentioning that I very much agree with are the, fa the fact that Valve is considering th what they're calling the, you know, outside normal review thing. If there's a spike in reviews, what they basically a fancy term for review bombing. Um, they will have a human, an actual human being, look at that and say, okay, this is a review bomb because of something that's external to the game. And one of the things that they're consider uh, considering external to the game is DRM and, uh, and user license agreement changes. And as people are pointing out, DRM and end user license agreements are something that are a part of the game. They are included with the game. The review is of the product. The product includes an end user license agreement and a DRM. So how are you justifying excluding those exactly? Would you stop because... trying to justify fraud, Pedro? <laughs> Listen, I'd, I'd rather he justify it pissing pissing in our faces. I, I mean, like, yeah, the, the 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 entire the entire process is like if they detect an uptick in reviews over X period of time, it gets flagged, gets sent to a human review team. They'll go over it and they'll make a decision from there. And that's just gonna. And I mean, yeah, once you once you add humans to the equation, it's gonna be a very ad hoc decision. Um, I don't I don't I don't, I don't know. Like to 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 some extent, yes, I I do agree with what Pedro's saying. Uh, because a hundred percent, if restrictive DRM or restrictive copy protection or licensing um, 
makes me not want to buy a game. I think I think I should be I should be able to look to a review for that information because where else am I going to go? I'm going to have to otherwise I'm going to have to go to an external source. And Valve has made it clear that they really don't want people to do that. On the other hand, if they want people to, if they want to just restrict the reviews for is this game fun? Did people enjoy it? I can see where they're coming at from that angle. Um I I I I don't know. At least Valve has attempted to like stop stop fully automating the solution and then only reacting when people are like drumming up a bunch of media attention cuz <laughs> this is this has been their MO for the entirety of Valve. Um, yes. <laughs> what I can see is this is cuz the reviews have already been restricted when you think about it because mm-hmm. unless you buy the game through Steam, your review doesn't count, not really. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's 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 true. There they they do have an option though. You can you can say allow all reviews and it'll affect and re- really all this does is affect the score. It doesn't actually take the reviews away. Right. All it does mm-hmm. is it all it does is modify that mostly positive, positive, negative, mostly negative. And I score. understand. I understand why they did that. This they're going to throw some automation in it, being Valve, and maybe by the third, possibly the fourth incarnation this will be a half functioning fucking system but until then um if you're posting a review during a review bomb that and they're not going to send you a memo the internet doesn't have a box for that to show up yeah your review is just not going to count and you'll never know leading to you going why am i even bothering in the first place yeah, and it's what it, it kind of undermines the really useful thing that the review system introduced recently, which was the recently submitted reviews. Because it's like, oh, so uh, it's actually like very positive, but recently people have been leaving a lot of negative reviews. Why is that? And that's usually when you figure out, oh, they introduced some really draconian DRM, or they made a change to the end user license agreement. That's a dick move. Or, or, yeah, or, or th- here, here, here's, here's, information. here's, here's another <laughs> example. Or, hey, they've just announced that they're, this Linux update is going to be their last one, and then you're not going to be able to buy the game on Linux anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's a, that, is, that is the thing that happened. And that is definitely something that specifically us as Linux users need to be aware of. Ticket to Ride did it. A couple other games mm-hmm. did it. And it's not, I mean, it's it's not cool, it's, especially when you're like, hey, man, I, I found this fun game. You should play. Oh, oh, well, the developer is being a jerk. Yeah, you really shouldn't give them money to encourage that behavior. There, there, need, there needs to be some way of communicating that. Yeah, a bit outside of making the, is this developer a jerk box? Which yeah. I'm not against Valve. All right, uh, you can have that yeah. idea for free. Yeah, or or yeah, we hell hell we could do it. If, welcome to our <laughs> TED Talk. This is how we started the is this developer an asshole dot com. Six developers enter, four leave because we too can't quick because they and then the project never gets released because there is no project management. Right. All right. All right. Uh, dwarves. Um, if you watch mirror stream, sometimes he plays some dwarf fortress, um, and it is coming to steam. Normally you'd have to go to the dwarf fortress website, download it, but, um, the steam version has a couple cool features. Um, and the money spent there will go to support the medical expenses of these guys. Cause apparently, you know, working on a free game is great and all, but sometimes you need to, you know, live to continue developing your games unless you've mastered lichdom, which possibly the dwarf <laughs> fortress guys have figured out but um the uh the D- steam version of dwarf fortress will come with um a f- official i like how it set. just informs me that time is subjective i mean it it is it's relative uh don't don't don't, don't you do your software development at super luminal speeds <laughs> <Occasionally>. um <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, it also comes with the uh, Steam Workshop integration, and they're also going to be making some improvements. Now, people, they, they're they're very clear on the uh, Patreon post. Um, that's also in our show notes. You can check that out. That if you're still going to be using the free version, you're still going to get like all the technical backend updates. You're just not going to get the nice tile sets. You're not going to get the Steam Workshop integration. You're, the game that you enjoyed playing is not going away. Um, but you know, these guys need some money, and you know, it's it's nice that they're releasing a game for free. Mm-hmm. But, you know, some, sometimes you got to eat or pay for cancer medication if you live in the United States. It, yeah. But then again, the type of people who play Dwarf Fortress probably don't really have a... Run name. Steam at all? Well, that <laughs> or have a hankering for a graphical tile set. 
I, I mean, yeah. some, some 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 of them do. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, I, I've seen a lot of heated debates over what is the superior fortress tile set. But <laughs> like, what is, what is the superior net hack tile set? You know, I there would is... say I would definitely pick it up and give them money. But Pedro, I might not want to do that. Yeah, because one of the things I noticed is like, okay, time is relative, blah blah. Then I scroll down to the uh, the system requirements, mostly out of curiosity. It's like. That only says Windows. I went to their uh, discussion forums, and it's like, oh, they're going to be releasing it on Steam for Windows only. Is that actually the thing? Are you actually doing that? Because, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I Did genuinely you have a that's... working Linux version. I, I just <laughs> genuinely hope that's not the case, because... Like Steam or not, this is a great way to support open source projects. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even if it's like, hey, man, I enjoy this game. I might not even play it, but I like it. Let me give you a few bucks. Hmm. And, 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 bought, and, 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 um, and, and that open source uh, strategy game, I don't really play it, was, but was it's not. Was not. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really play it, but I bought it on Steam because I wanted to give them some money. Yeah, and yeah. I, and I mean, and like 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 I said, the the free version with the native Linux version isn't going anywhere. This is just they're they're throwing it on itch too. Uh, again, they're just trying to make some money off it, which I think is I think is fine. Yeah, may, maybe they should have included the Linux version. Don't make people play Dwarf Fortress through Proton. That's like playing into the breach through Proton. It's like really, <laughs> really. Do I have to open? I need GL an abstraction layer for yeah. this. <laughs> right. It's, okay. I, I doubt that thing's even using OpenGL. To be perfectly honest. Let's get into a few um, new games. Yes, indeed. So the first one is uh, Trubberbrook, and it's a. Okay vacation to a 1960s parallel universe and uh, they describe it as a sci-fi mystery adventure game it's a point and click adventure and the graphics look really nice it's actually the like all the animation and the way that the characters are drawn that looks really really nice but one of the things that kind of you know put me back is like it just came out and it's already got neutral the uh, review scores it's like that that doesn't bode well usually it's yeah i, I know, like how it looks but i don't want to be that... the price guy but i will say <laughs> we'll address this later on in the show when, when you're dropping 30 quid on something you expect a certain level of game yeah it, that probably has something to do with it <laughs> yeah I, I i mean honestly i think i think this is a game that steve steve husband would really like just because of all the backgrounds they look like the backgrounds of fucking like handcrafted claymation films. Oh, um, I thought it was just because he had a raging clue for sci-fi in 1960s Germany. I mean, also that. <laughs> okay. Um, the, the, I mean, I mean, go 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 take a go take a walk around that man's house, and you'll you'll see that's the case. Um, German sci-fi, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, see, a lot a lot of the mixed reviews have to do with the fact that apparently this is like a Sierra style point and click adventure game Mm -hmm. where it gets, it gets a little dumb and it gets a little obtuse and people are, it's been made kind of clear that people are fairly sick of that formula at this juncture. I I would go so far as to say everyone wanted that until developers remade (laughs) that and they played it and they're like, this was kind of rubbish. It's like, that's why we moved on from that type of game. Dipshit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the, uh, the the other the other complaint I see about this is the length of it is actually pretty short. So yeah, people were saying it's like oh three hours and you're done. Yeah, three hours for ten thirty bucks. bucks. Mm. That's that, that's ten dollars an hour. That's that's minimum wage in Ontario. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, is this memes? I don't know, but it is Hypnospace Outlaw. Greetings, Enforcer, and thank you for enlisting in the hypno da 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 bustling go. Pedro, you did a better job deciphering what the hell this is than I can. Yeah, so it's a game about being the internet police, basically, and it's and single player. Goofed, huh? Yeah, it, it's single player. Yeah, single player. I, I, I literally put that down in the show notes when I went through them. Like, yeah, become the cyber beliefs and inform people when they done goofed. That's... Yeah, and it's 
the the way if you look at the trailer, the way that they like animated everything, it's very 90s style, and you can tell that there was a lot of effort. Oh, put. you can just eat. Di- All right, that does look kind of like VRML. But the yes. motion video, uh-uh, no. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of getting a bit of like a total distortion vibe from it, to be perfectly honest, at least in like this scene that we're looking at. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it, it definitely looks like this is the 90s extreme view what the internet will be like in the year 2001, yo. Mm. And it, 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 it does look like there was a lot of effort put to make it look exactly like that and the review scores on this one are like 99% positive although there may be a lot of ironic yeah I love this game type of reviews because this is the internet and that, mm-hmm. that's you, you, what you, people you, do the, 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 there's <laughs> two, two, two reviews that come up as, as most helpful are you can download faster internet and finally GeoCities has been ported to Steam <laughs> nice <laughs> 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 Might have to give that a look then. All right. That, one, see, someone, someone bangs just that. That's a, that's a good show title. Mm-hmm. Before we get out of here, one last bit. Baba is you. Um, puzzle game rules. You have to follow them. Wow. Manipulate them. Change how the game works. Repurpose things and interact. Hipster ASCII. This is like ha- ASCII made with um, tile sets. I don't know how I, I mean, feel I, about this. I mean, so th- this is another one of these uh, games that was developed as part of a game jam, was fairly well received, and then they decided to just polish it up and put it on Steam. And the the whole the whole thing about how you know you can you can change the rules of the level by moving stuff mm-hmm. is is mm-hmm. kind of interesting. But it's also it's also been done before. Um, I'm I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of that one Zelda like game where you have to like hack stuff hack and, it and slash. Hack and slash. There mm-hmm. you go. Um, that that that's sort of, that's sort of what it reminded me of, but. I don't, I don't know. I, I like games that sort of fuck with the sort of notion of what the rules of the game are. Um, it, 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 it's it's interesting from a conceptual level. Narrative driven 3D one where you could actually hack the characters and reprogram them. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Where it's like a very low poly and I cannot remember the name and of it. For life, yeah, you, you were watching the narrators as they were. Put, yeah, it was very fucking meta game. It was brilliantly directed, but. It yeah. just got a little, little too up its own ass. Yeah, was, we 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 we've reached chairs that to Pedro. I I know you. I I I, I too am just completely spacing on the name. Yeah, it, it sounds familiar. The concept sounds familiar. It's like I did no, the name just gone. But Hundreds yeah, it, it does. Yeah, this one uh, does very much feel like a hack and slash, but it's been hyper simplified. It's like the way you change the rules is you push words close to each other, and they become a new rule. And yeah, it it's simple enough. And I mean, okay, eleven pounds thirty nine is a bit much, I'd say, for this style yeah, of game. Tw- but tw- it's, it's 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 twenty bucks Canadian. Mm. I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. If you, that that's that's the thing though. Like this is one of those things where if you you could probably like go track down the original Game Jam version and play that. If you want to support indie development, this is right. the way you do it. Mm-hmm. Good thing. All right. Yeah. Coming up next, oh my god, there's a brand new Mesa. It's finally out. Your AMD video cards will now outperform the entire computational capacity of the universe. Hashtag also, Mesa we- so horny. <laughs> yeah, Mesa, <laughs> Mesa horny. The news are right around the corner, but before we get to that, well, we have actually a lot of people to think this week because, wow. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> that's pe- a lot pe- of new pe- patrons. <laughs> people, people are making it rain. So I guess, I guess let's uh, let's get into this. Uh, we got we got a lot of people who to thank to who make this entire nonsense possible, allowing us yep. to fly to like California and do conventions, or I don't know, stream whatever Proton game Pedro is playing on Tuesday. It doesn't really matter. But we uh, amongst those people, we have to thank uh, Chad, Dominic, Basil, or Basil. I don't know. Send us some hate mail to correct me. And I like Nicole. Basil. I'm down with Basil. 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 <laughs> Basil, Basil or Basil? We, l- listen, B- Bang suggests which one you think it is, Basil I or Basil. I absolutely uh, spent an evening referring to Basil as Basil just to see if somebody would dare fucking correct me. All right, well, if, <laughs> um, but you know, if, if you want to be on this list of awesome people who are giving us cashola, you can head on over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Look at my beautiful grinning face. Doesn't it just give you nightmares? It's horrifying. Pro- pro- probably slightly less worse nightmares than Pedro's grin. Um, uh, 
becoming a patron gives you some cool stuff like access to the pre super shows and where you can hear about my tra- uh, my laments of traveling <laughs> on an airplane or about pedro and his laptop whichever it happens to be um you get access to um to our discord channel if you uh become a sponsor at the death note level you get access to the show notes and that's kind of cool because you can call us on our bullshit before we even go live with our bullshit it's amazing a horrible idea Indeed. Uh, we also got a store, uh, teespring.com slash Linux Gamecast, where you can, you know, cover your filthy, I, uh, filthy man, body. I've hooked it up. Store.linuxgamecast.com. It's finally oh, nice. happened, you guys. <laughs> Ron Paul. Jeff. Store.linuxgamecast.com. You can get some Hellox shirt stickers. Uh, you can get a one chair shirt and give it to your friend and be like, here, I got this for you. And they won't even ever know that you're insulting them. Um <laughs> We got a, we got a we got a wish zone too. If uh, Ven gives us the wide shot there, you might be able to still see Frank. I'm not sure. I don't recall seeing him in the scene. But there he is, Frank cre- creeping is over there. Ever. How dare you, you monster! Frank, Frank, ever. <laughs> we got um, Bradley, and it's still Jill, advertising Maddie, for Rod, Michael G, Johnny, <laughs> Mister. I'm going to do this because you forgot about Frank. Linux, Nuru, Clockia, Steve O, Jelly Bean, the Admiral JT, Truggy, near Lutris. That's Frenchy. Dot net. Go check it out. And Mag. Dan W J, I don't know. It's just a JJ really in our theory. Deal with it, Frank for life, yeah, bitch. Y- y- y'all, y'all, motherfuckers, <laughs> act like you forgot about Frank, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, if you want to get, if you want to get on Frank's fuckwall, though, you got to buy some stuff off the wish list. Oh my god, look at that Ryzen Threadripper thing. We really, really desperately Let's need it. Burn maybe, money. Maybe, maybe, maybe some RAM, some <laughs> NVMe drives. We eventually, Ven will go and buy this. If you want to stop him from making poor financial decisions by making a poor financial decision yourself. <laughs> Yeah. This wish list <laughs> enables you to do that. And of course, all the other crap over at uh, LinuxGameCast.com, you can click the support button. Uh, we got all the Amazon affiliate links, uh, Humble Partner links, if you want to get on that Humble Bundle with a couple days left to get overgrowth for 10 bucks. We'll tell you why that's a bad idea later, but uh, you know, well, <laughs> you, you, should, you should still do it to support us and maybe charity. Um, hey, we want to thank everybody for making this possible. That is kind of crazy. And double thanks to everybody shopping through the Amazon affiliate links because I think a lot of people are doing that because Amazon's sending me things of like how to trick you into clicking and buying more shit. Yes. <laughs> it's like, here, send out this in your social media to entice people. I'm like, eat a bag of dicks, Amazon. I love Amazon because, you know, stuff, it works good, but I wouldn't do that to everyone. Yeah. Indeed. No. I do it to I, jo- I'll I, do it to I, Jordan in a fucking heartbeat, but no one else. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I just need to remember to click the affiliate link before actually buying shit on Amazon because <laughs> I very rarely buy stuff on Amazon. Hey, well, I but, gotta thank Pedro because ever since Pedro's moved to Englandia. Yeah. I mean, I, I bookmarked it specifically for that purpose. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh, 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 all right. That, that's that's totally not nepotism. I don't know what it is. Someone, <laughs> someone sent some, some hate mail to come up with an name for it. We got we got news to talk about though. We got Mesa nineteen dot oh. It's released. A lot of people were reading the Pharonix bench parks where Michael Larabel was compiling it for himself. He probably there's probably a Padoka PPA or and there's a copper repo or wait a minute. AUR. He was compiling it from source. I have no fucking clue. I just. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna give him i'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt for once just oh, the so one he must time. not run arch probably not um <laughs> yeah um if you, uh Elsie there's, there's a send your hate mail to jordan <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but yeah uh mesa 19 is out uh it's a real boy um if you look at the long release notes because there's a very truncated one on the mailing list um the witcher 3 actually gets a uh, quite a few fixes targeted in the release notes um, there's a lot of fixes regarding, uh, VKD3D as well for the DirectX 12 compatibility stuff. And finally, OpenGL 4.5 is a real boy. Um, you can now use it as an actual target and not have to worry about some features missing depending on your driver. So, uh, this will be coming out to the distributions over the next couple of weeks. Different distributions have different release schedules for um, Mesa releases. I know Fedora is probably going to push it back sometime. At least I'm on 28. It might come to 29. I may have to set up a, a copper repo. Apparently, there was some issue yep. with some library not building um, under Mesa or not working with Mesa 19, which is why they were pulling it back. It was from RPM Fusion, too. It was really weird. I was reading through that. Anyways. Uh, it's available for your perusal. If you want to build it from source, you can get all that open source, open GL and Vulcan goodness in your face. Yeah. And one of the things is the new build system because Mesa will now be built in Mason going forward. 
because they're deprecating all the auto conf stuff and basically it's yeah just get mesa up and running if you're one of those people that likes to have mesa built from sauce on your box <clears throat> i was really hoping i would be one of the people but because it's not often <laughs> we were joking at the beginning of the show about building a new computer every two years it's even from like getting a new medium to high-end graphics card a little bit longer and i was finally for me at least uh in the position is like i need to get a something to replace the 980 or upgrade I'm still using the 980 and amd wasn't wasn't there navi wasn't there i really wanted it to be there and yeah now well, i mean navi navi's still not here so i didn't get the memo neither did <laughs> nvidia i think because they pretty much covered the spread lately most recently with the 1660 ti not satisfied with that they said we can go lower and they did from pc per all of this in the show notes go check it out in the video link description or the podcast uh it's out there's a review and well it's cheap starting at 279 i've seen it as low as 219 uh even at newegg it was in limited stock on that same tu 16 architecture however however um gddr5 the hell pedro yeah, it's not even GDDR5X because, you know, that improvement on GDDR5 that lowered the uh, power consumption, increased performance, basically made you uh, an overclocking god on your GPU if you wanted to do that. No, you just get GDDR5. It's like, really, NVIDIA? Really? We're really going back to the 9 series when it comes to the memory on this thing? Mm. <laughs> Jordan, Jordan, do you got any thoughts? I mean, if you if you look at the if you look at the performance over here, uh, it handily whoops the RX five ninety, which was the main AMD competitor here. Um, mind you, Sebastian, uh, you you and I need to have some words because all of these benchmarks are using DirectX eleven and DirectX twelve, which is useless to you know people who are not on Windows. Um, perhaps maybe throw in a couple of Vulcan benchmarks just so that we can get a little bit, a bit of an accurate taste as to what we should expect in terms of performance. DX12 is the future, bro. It really is because it runs through it runs through Vulcan. So fuck you. And it runs uh, on Windows Seven now. Mm -hmm. In Wow, for, kind of. For, for, but that's like kind it, of. It's like the yeah. short bus Vulcan, I'm not Vulcan. <laughs> yeah. DX12. Um, one thing I will say about it: this is touring. So if you've been looking, if you're mm -hmm. someone who's streaming, there is your uh, access to the new NB encode hotness. I'd maybe wait I'll, for the sixteen fifty yeah. though, because that'll that'll come in under sub two hundred dollars. Then you think about this though, because they did not have NV encode in the ten fifties. Hmm. So I, I I guess that's a big old wait and see then. Right. It's yeah. one of those things where you could wait, and then you're just gonna buy it anyway. I still I, think I, I, I still it's, think it's, if you're looking to, to game not know. and do something at easily 1080p, 1440p, 98 percent, get a 26. Yeah, oh yeah, the, 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 mm -hmm. this this is the, again this was really targeted at like a much lower price point, mm -hmm. um, especially for like lower income gamers or like may, maybe even people where the exchange rate is just really really rough and they want something that mm -hmm. can do 1080p. Well, but they, they didn't don't... even do a founders edition. This is only for add-in partners. Mm -hmm. Yep. So oh, the entire 16 series no. is uh, AIBs only. So yeah, it, I don't know honestly. Right now, I'd say wait for the 1650 and see what that can do if you're just looking for something. But it's... I'm uh, going to save you some time, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to wait and see what it's going to do. It's going to be worse than this. Well, yeah. Okay. I'm just I'll, saying... I'll, I'll, I'll be, obviously, the number is lower. Completely, yeah. Completely PCIe power. It's something that performs about on par with... I don't know. What Pedro is uh, trying to say is if you're looking to build like a baby steam machine, 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. Or you're just looking to upgrade that pre-built that your parents bought you however many years ago, and you don't have the power supply to drive the PCIe uh, extra power connector. Yeah. Or if or if you're just <laughs> poor, right? That mm-hmm. that's that's yeah. the big one. <laughs> if you don't if you don't have money, you have to make sacrifices. As somebody who's definitely been broke in their lives, this is like a strategy I developed a long time ago, and it's something that I still use. Buy used people. Because you know what mm-hmm. I can get for two hundred dollars? I could get a nine eighty Ti. Really? I can just get a Subway sandwich. It's half eaten. <laughs> but I live in Canada, so what do I know? This is true. All right. Um, all signs point to a Google Game Console announcement at GDC, and that is the Apple Game Console because that was actually a thing. The what was mm-hmm. it? The not the not the Newton was it? Uh, no, it had some other stupid thing. There are, I mean, they real people have them. I've seen them on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Pippin, Pippin, that's Pippin, what it was. That's right. Uh, GDC, they're going to show up and everyone's saying, hey, man, this is like what's going to come out of Project Stream. And I don't know. Uh, we're going to talk about the future of gaming. You can watch live, at, which I'm maybe we'll do a live stream of this event. Uh, someone remind me to do it. I'll try to. Make that okay, thing. Google, remind me. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know if I'm excited about this, but I'm not shocked because even Microsoft rolled out uh, earlier this month. They said, hey, man, we're going to release a version of the Xbox, like the current gen Xbox without a optical drive in it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the, uh, yeah, the yeah, the it's not even the Xbox One X; it's the original one, mm. which made me question the buy though. <laughs> Pro- the, what, 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 so, so Sony used to do that with the with the Playstations. After a while, they'd release like a really cut down version for a lot cheaper that like the had, slim. Yeah, the, the yeah, the but they already had the Xbox One S. This is going to be the Xbox One SS. It's going to be the negative S. <laughs> It's going to give no S. Here's the thing. No, I, I don't get it. It's going to be wicked cheap to do. And if you have halfway decent internet bandwidth, especially when you're dealing with games that have 90 gigabyte day one patches. Mm-hmm. Star Citizen. <laughs> That's not even out yet. Yeah. But all this could be solved with streaming. But unless things have radically changed, uh, I know... Strider in chat was part of Project Stream, and I myself was playing with the Assassin's Creed Odyssey. That, even at 1080p, I mean, it it was serviceable. You could deal with it in a pinch, but mm, yeah, I wouldn't pay for it. And 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 again, like it requires you to have really good internet, which is not guaranteed, especially in mm-hmm. 20, in twenty nineteen. Having quality internet is not a thing that's very widespread. Um, you're gonna you're gonna need to have a good upload source, which I guess Google has, and Valve streaming from your home doesn't. But I mean, I mean, it 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 could it could be interesting. Um, Google ha- definitely has the resources and the wherewithal to release something that'll definitely throw a monkey wrench into a lot of like Sony and Microsoft and maybe even Valve's plans. Yeah, they could so, have done that with Google Fiber, but they tapped out. Uh, mm-hmm. That's that that that's that's because uh, what lo- local governments were getting sued by Verizon or something or. Uh, well, yeah, that's because the incumbents like AT and T were. I'm suing the townships and like you can't allow competition in here that's not fair somehow yeah, legally we're, they made we're, that make sense we're, 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 no because they're they're competing with the other companies that operate in entirely different regions that's mm-hmm. that's competition right yeah well, yeah. No. yeah so but it's google. google it's it's most likely going to be something along the lines of the nvidia shield not the shield or the shield it's the shield like the games console Start, fuck with, you pedro with this thing's going to ship with dual xeon uh <laughs> Running Android, <laughs> running Android, and they're going to call it the Guya. Honestly, that that's a, that that does sound like something like a slime boy Macho Man Randy Savage would like Say burst it, into man. a room and say, yeah. Guya! So it's basically going to be a more expensive Steam Link that runs the app and maybe a couple of Android games on the side. Yeah, well, you if you see, when you open the case, up, it, it's just going to be a Steam Link in there with some wires. <laughs> no, yeah, no, you, you, open, you open the case and it's just, it's just like a Raspberry Pi. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and and a note that says, haha, you paid five hundred dollars for this. LOL JK. <laughs> um all right. DXVK new version. 
Oh, yes. Uh, so there's the first point release of the 1.0 version, and this one is just bug fixes and improvements. They fixed the memory allocation failures on Intel Bay Trail, if for some reason you were trying to use the XVK on your x86 tablet. Uh, they fixed the regression that broke the XGI Gamma Control. The Devil May Cry 5 has a couple of uh, new... Um, features enabled in the xvk specifically for it one of which is also shared with uh resident evil 2. uh they also fixed world of warcraft because i guess uh with the new patch that introduced the x12 on windows 7 they also changed some other um bits if, 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 uh, if the xvk break that's basically <laughs> yes <what it> was. <laughs> they changed uh, some bits and they uh the dxvk the guy just basically went well i just fixed the gpu hangs and you can play it again now so that's really well, nice <laughs> so we, we were talking about this many weeks ago when we were talking about um wine's own uh direct x11 direct x12 implementations and mm -hmm. why they shouldn't, and why or why not they shouldn't bring the XVK into the fold. This is exactly the reason why it benefits the XVK to be entirely decoupled from Wine, because it's really yep. it's a lot easier to fix one busted component than rebuild the entire damn app. And it definitely allows allows the XVK to react a lot faster to newer games. Uh, it would it would have taken it would have taken months for um, Resident Evil. Uh, two to get supported under Wine with the old model, but now because they can rapidly iterate and because Valve is you know mm -hmm. making it rain, yeah, <laughs> um, they, they, they can they can react to this very quickly. Valve can push out a new version of Steam Play, and lo and behold, now Linux users have more stuff that they can just play out of the box. Well, definitely not to rewind the horse. Um, and then again, I could be giving Valve too much credit. <clears throat> they could be going for the long game with this, with the Steam Play option with the streaming option and maybe they're going to do their own hardware. This is like, Hey, what does your console play? Everything. Yeah. Covering all of the bases, like literally everything, dipping your toes at least to see what it's like. And it, it, they've been doing a reasonably good job, except for the hardware department. But yeah. I, I mean, it, it definitely goes, it dev, definitely does go hand in hand with Valve's stated desire to make PC gaming a more open platform and mm -hmm. a lot more accessible. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, stuff stuff like this is very emblematic of it. But you know, we're we're we're, we're done waiting. Oh, oh wait, no, <laughs> Ryan, oh, wait, no, there's, Ryan, there's another thing. You were creating yeah. games, tools, an awesome thin. Yes, yes, you awesome are. thin. And one of those awesome thin is SDL two. Well, SDL is not SDL two. It's compatibility for one point mm -hmm. two to SDL2, which I think Ryan's like, that's a stupid idea. No one should ever... Oh, here it is. He actually said that. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, the, 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 the other thing, too, is he's saying, like, he took a couple cracks at it before, and it never went anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And now, now now that there's a Patreon, and people are like, yo, man, we're gonna give you money if you do Patreon this. Patreon gets like, shit done. Yeah. yeah. If, if, you, if, you, if you dangle <laughs> that carrot in front of software developers, they'll, they'll, they'll try to take a nibble. I'm curious, though. Um, so... Like uh, th this, this is the uh, this is the um, compatibility layer. It's supposed to be a library replacement so that you can just have uh, SDL two support for SDL one point two games, which is great because SDL one point two needs to fucking die in a fire mm -hmm. in the age of yeah. people having more than one monitor being plugged into their computer as kind of a default assumption. No, here. Jordan, you, people will miss out on the fun and excitement <laughs> of having your other two monitors go black while your main one's like in you're like well, where's this going it's an adventure yeah it's an 800 plus, by 600 game <laughs> full screen plus, I, 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 UHD I mean, plus, monitor. Plus, plus you get a bunch of cool stuff like wayland support you get the the imp the the sdl input which supports every single freaking controller under the under the moon i'm curious though if this actually uses any of mr alert's sdl cl project because i know ryan was aware of it someone tweeted it at him mm -hmm. Mm. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm curious if, uh, Mr. Alert should get a little bit of a credit there, or maybe this is just based on an older version that Ryan had picked up and just polished off. Shit. This is stuff. Ryan just walked to the back of the shed and dusted off. He's like, here. <laughs> My yeah, God, it's basically, just, oh, look, I started this a while back. I guess I got to finish it now. <laughs> I, 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 I just looked at Discord and it's freaking, it's it's straight up turning Japanese, man. I, I have no idea yeah, what's going it, on. It's Weeb Town in Discord right now. It's, uh, <laughs> no, my question is. So, Ryan, what exactly changed your mind? Because when you were on LWDW, you specifically said that you weren't going to do this, no matter how much people asked. 
you weren't going to do this, so that, what happened? That was before he was getting paid. <laughs> Here, Pedro, um, let me see if I can give you a graphical <laughs> representation. What possibly? <laughs> Canadian yeah, money. what's the yeah. caches? You'll, you'll, you'll fucking do it for this. <laughs> As we've proven multiple times of uh, Dance Monkeys Dance. Um, hey, Godo 3.1, it's out and it's improving things, making everyone it, it, better. It is. Um, we're, we're done waiting for Godot. Um, there's there's a bunch of new features like um, the uh, optional typing in GD script, uh, tile set editors, 2D skeletons, a bunch of 3D improvements, soft body support. Uh, one thing that they couldn't get rid of, though, they were desperately, desperately, desperately trying to kill OpenGLES 2.1, but, you know, they couldn't because, as it turns out, OpenGL... Well, look at little under- Timmy the horror robot. Um, kill uh, me. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it literally looks like the teddy bear that Dr. Krieger tried to, like, market to children. Yes. Um, but... <laughs> Sorry, Doctor Krieger. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, um, it, as it turns out, OpenGL under Windows and Mac is dog shit, and I wonder why. Foxy was very quick to point out in the show notes, which is a thing you can do if you're a Patreon at two fifty a week level. Um, it does actually default to OpenGL ES three I never said otherwise, but yes, uh, they could. They wanted to remove it from Godot three It is not happening as well. Um, it's entirely open source. You can go check it out from their GitHub. There's a flat pack if you want to just get up and running um makes game development very very easy makes it very very accessible um and you should definitely check out all these release notes uh, yeah. to see if there is something that you can use in you too project. can go out and make horror babies yes <laughs> and you I, should are, are, just I, I mean, make aren't a they, aren't game just, with horror babies i want to play I mean, your horror baby gaming godot you know <laughs> i mean I, needs you, to redo you, the muppet <laughs> babies theme song with horror babies See, I'm, I'm I'm of the opinion that horror babies are just regular babies because keep them the fuck away from me. I don't no no. If, 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 if you if you are if you are a baby, stay the fuck away from me. All right, penguins, six months. It's a thing. <sighs> all right, all right. The, yet, yet another a chapter in the saga of Neon Jasonness Evangelion. Um. So after 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 six months, he has uh after attempting to use Linux exclusively and do his gaming and is working on it. Um, he, uh, he wrote a little, he wrote a little article on uh, medium. Normally he writes for Forbes, but this is, this is his own little bloggy poo. Um, and a lot of it, th- you know what? So for, for, first off, he, he does, he, he makes a lot of complaints about Linux drivers. Um, and there, uh, I know how Nouveau is the default offering for a lot of Linux distributions before you install the NVIDIA proprietary drivers. And yes, Nuvo sucks. No one is questioning this, but I have to reiterate that when the development process involves a tunneling electron microscope, it is a minor miracle that Nuvo works as well as it does, period, considering NVIDIA's outright hostility to open source. Um, and yes, there is a lot of valid criticism here, and distributions need to start working to better indicate what the various driver options are to make them more accessible for new people. Um and in in a manner that doesn't require a lot of foreknowledge about the Linux driver landscape, because like like uh, Jason said, there there is there is quite a bit of you. This is stuff you would not know unless you were embedded into it. And part part of that is just sort of like the the it's almost Linux's fault because there are a lot of options, and that's a double edged sword because customization is the one of the biggest strengths that Linux has as a computer platform. But option paralysis is a very real thing, especially for new users, which I think is why a lot of uh, you see a lot of new people distro hop at first because they're trying to figure out what their options are and what they like and what they don't like. And it seems like a fairly natural way to go about it. Oh, there's all these Linux distributions. They all must do something different. They really don't. But if you're new, you, you, you wouldn't know that. That said, there are a lot of issues here that are like, oh well, none of the games are on time. Yeah, because none of the, uh, none of the games are actively like developed for this platform, right? We're using yep. Wine and DXVK to make games run that weren't originally supposed to be running. So of course it will take time. A lot of it just boils down to wah wah. This is different from Windows. Why are you making me learn this new thing? It's hard because. Uh, Mac has spoiled me because there's only one bit of hardware they need to support or Microsoft installs a bunch of drivers that actually don't work and you still need to go to the website to download the better drivers because whatever's in the Windows 10 registry is really, really old because no one updates it. It, it, it. It's all 
it's all about understanding the platform that you're moving to, not making assumptions based on past experiences, especially when you're moving from a Win32 based OS to a Linux or Unix OS based. No, I, I should be able to take my knowledge from a Tinker Toy operating system and apply it to a server grade enterprise class thing, and everything I know over there should work the same way. Mm hmm. <laughs> I mean, I mean, to, uh, the, the, this is a this is a very very narrow professional example, but yes, when you when you get to the nitty gritty, it's like okay, this is how a networking stack is supposed to operate. This is how a graphic stack is supposed to operate. But yeah, it's not it's not the same all over the place. And I I, I think really really the the moral of the story here is if you're going to adopt Linux, don't half ass it. Don't dual boot. Dive into it. Figure out what the problems is. Are learn learn how to solve problems mm -hmm. for yourself because. Again, with all the options that are available for you under Linux, it is very rare that all of them are going to be located under a single umbrella, and that can be yeah. a bad thing. But at the same time, um, you you don't you never see people under Windows running beta drivers or incomplete software for the sake of it implements this one feature that they need, and you're 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 you're, you're confined by the release schedule of those software projects. You know, in the open source world. That's not the case. You can write a patch to backport specific functionality to an older version. That doesn't really exist in the Windows version. Well, before uh, Pedro in, in the jumps Windows in universe. on this, I do want to say, I, I feel it's a little, uh, not Jason at all, but uh, I'm saying as a whole, it's a bit disingenuous to say, well, you know, it ships with it. Anybody who's playing games on Windows, you're going to go out, you're going to get the MSI or whatever, the Afterburner and the auto overclock bolt. You're going to vendors' websites, like Jordan said. So to say, well, I got to, like, type in app, get, install, NVIDIA, or add a PPA, you're splitting chainsaws there. I mean, you're looking for, I mean, it's Yeah, we kind different. of sort of touched on that but last it's the week same thing. with the uh, yeah. KDE Digest article. Yeah, it's, and to Jordan's point, well, I was going to uh, reinforce uh, Jordan's point with the post that Jason had made on Medium later on about how he was going to do a nine-way distro shootout between like Fedora, Ubuntu Elementary, and a bunch of other distros. Uh, and uh, the post seems to be gone now. So might want to look on Google Cache for the link that's in the show notes because apparently it, it he's not going to do that or it's, I don't know. But yeah, it's I will agree with both Jason and Jordan that distros need to signpost a hell of a lot better what exactly is uh the recommended driver for your hardware and they need to keep the politics out of it because there are a lot of distros out there that refuse to uh provide nvidia drivers because nvidia or they refuse to provide intel specific uh updates like microcode updates because intel and that is not helping anyone except your own ego so uh, to, to, to that point that? about not to that point about not shipping <laughs> NVIDIA software, though, there is a legal gray area when it comes to actually distributing the NVIDIA drivers mm -hmm. and guys like Ubuntu just ignore it. The Red Hat folks are saying <laughs> we're not going to we're not even going to fucking set our foot in there. If you want to if you want to install NVIDIA drivers, you can do it. We're not going to stop you, mm -hmm. but we're not we're not going to host them. We'll we'll direct we'll direct you to Negativo, who has been doing that work, or we'll direct you to RPM Fusion, who, will, who is doing that work. But. Your mileage may vary. That's on your own risk. We're not going to take that on because well, we... Well, let's look at things that you can flip on your head, though. Like, mm. we're looking at video cards installing drivers. As somebody who uh, spends a lot of time installing kind of bizarre shit for our specialized use case, let's talk about installing a new fucking sound card, USB sound card Boop. on Linux versus Windows. Uh, yeah. Click. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, outside Sounds of the like, graphics drivers, Linux is plug and play for the most part. That oh, hey, look, yeah. I, I have a brand new <laughs> webcam. I'm going to click. Done. Done. <laughs> yeah, b b basically, if it, if it enters through a USB or a PCI port, odds are it'll probably work. Hey, man, I'm going mm -hmm. to install this FireWire card in a modern si insert. Yeah. Yep. Done. Yep. So yeah, gra gra strengths and weaknesses. I mean, you can focus on one thing and make a point, but you also need to pay attention to the other things that it does very well too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Indeed. Just so. <laughs> All right. All right. Coming up next, we didn't pay $30 for this game, but you might have to. Uh -uh. All 
That musical sting tells us that it's time for the chair acquisition, where the accused must survive the trial by Fedora, Solus, and Ubuntu. And then, and only then, the question can be asked. Did you have fun? Uh, this week, we're taking a look at uh, Overgrowth, a.k.a. Rabbit Stew, developed by Wolfire Games on the Phoenix Engine. You can pick it up. Um, if you if you were smart, you picked it up in the humble bundle for ten bucks. Otherwise, you're paying thirty bucks for uh, the privilege of <laughs> experiencing Majesty. this perfection. Yes. Um, uh, what does it feel like the star of martial arts film in Overgrowth as you jump, kick, throw, and slash your way to victory? Um, yeah, no one sent us some keys. We bought this for <laughs> humbles. Yeah, so let's get started. Ven, how did how, 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 how this boy run? Magical. I'm not being facetious for once. Uh, no issues over here on 1810 running kernel 5.02 um, 418 NVIDIA on the 2060 Ryzen 1700 box of business. Nothing to complain about. It was holding um, solid 70 plus perps at 2160. I didn't even try it at 1080. I was like, well, let's see how bad this thing runs at UHD. And I was like, shit, runs fine. Played it like that. Looks like a nine-year-old game. Graphics, I didn't have any glitches. I really shouldn't. I mean, a lot of this, uh, if you're a fan of negative space, this game's got it for you. Controls. Worked out of the box with the X, not even an X clone, actual Xbox controller with an X clone receiver. Ah, the default scheme, admittedly, these two will bring that up and I'll talk about it later, but it is jacked up, but you know, jacked up. Game controls were kind of a style, you know, nine years ago. But I'll give a clean bill of help. Solid four chairs. Yeah, uh, so when I, when I launched it, it launched in this weird windowed mode that had a menu. Uh, and then when you change the resolution, it also resizes your monitor's resolution. I found this out because I tried to switch it from windowed mode to full screen and it went to the other screen. And when I sw switched it to back to windowed mode and tried to drag it to my main monitor, everything was huge all of a sudden. And I went, oh, because you <laughs> did that. So I'm going to ding it a chair for that. Otherwise, yeah, I tried playing it at UHD, and it ran like utter dog shit. Um, <laughs> and like that, that, that was the thing, though. Like it was un, it was unplayable, but the, the frame counter on Steam overlay, overlay was like, yeah, dude, you're getting like 100 frames a second, but it did not feel like that. The I guess the frame timing was off or some shit. I have no idea. At 1080, though, it was getting, again, well over 100 frames a second. Which means that's pretty good. Graphical, graphical wise, they're okay. Although I did notice that respawning involves a very, very creepy stretched out rabbit model. Um, that's mm -hmm. gonna give me nightmares for the coming weeks. That's legit. <laughs> yeah, but again, but again, like this doesn't look like too big of a graphical improvement over Lugaru, which you know. Have you played a, Lugaru recently? I, I, it is. <laughs> It, it is okay. It is significant. May, okay, <laughs> may, may, maybe maybe that's just rose tinted goggles. So I'll I'll give it that. And yeah, I'm gonna take it a step further from Pedro. But like the default bindings make no sense. It's like someone played a Dark Souls game and they're like, <laughs> yeah, we're our our game control scheme uses way less buttons, or, but we're gonna like try and fucking copy it, and it just works miserably. You have to have to have to have to rebind everything for the game to be even remotely playable. I'll give it three chairs for the technical section. There are definitely some problems here that don't behoove a $30 game. We'll get to that a little bit more later on in the fun section. Pedro, how'd Solus work? Yeah. Oh, I guess this was oh, well, I guess this was on Fedora 29 or 28 with the uh 6700K GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah. Yeah. So over here on Solus 3.9999999 uh it uh it launched, it stayed launched uh and it performs very well at 1080p. Uh there, yeah, the performance at UHD it's a bit ich, but uh, no, it, at 1080p it's it's absolutely fine. There were some graphical glitches in the recording. Uh, hopefully this review won't go long enough for them to show, but in some of the swamp levels, regardless of whether you were using um, NVENC or X264, it just had some real issues with the shaders. I don't know exactly why, and none of my obvious Googling returned anything useful, so remains to be seen exactly why that happened. The controls, yeah, like Jordan already hinted at, they were kind of atrocious to start with. You need to rebind some stuff for it to make any degree of sense. But yeah, it's uh, it lets you rebind anything, so I won't be digging into the chair for that. So as far as uh, over here on Solus with the 1600 and the GTX 1080, absolutely clean bit of health, clean bill of health, four chairs. 
er, er, everyone's just butchering words left and right. It's that time of night, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's <laughs> right. steam overnight. Did I? All right. Well, maybe that's because I have a giant bugger in my nose that I can't kick. <laughs> Anyways, fun segment. Uh, did you have fun Ben, playing Loved playing it. Overgrowth? Best game of the year, 2019. Um, this game's got so many FSM damn problems. It's not funny, but I'll try to make this entertaining. Not really. I made it all the way, nowhere near where Pedro's at current. He's, I'll never see this part of the game. Um, I made it up to the wall run ice jump part. So almost an hour into the game. And up until then, I kind of found the controls. You know, we were talking about the actual default controls, but the controls themselves are unresponsible. Unresponsibly, yes. I like that. <laughs> Freudian it's very slip. irresponsible. It was very unresponsible to release this game. Uh, unresponsive, floaty, but also amusing. Right up until the point to where the game said you kind of need to do something other than flail around aimlessly. And I didn't feel like RNGing my way through that bit. And I tried. I probably spent 10 minutes dying in succession. Pedro did too on his live stream of this game last week. Mm -hmm. Right at that point, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, I remember being intrigued by the combat system way back when, but what we got with this ship product is nothing more than hold down the attack, wiggle a stick, and hope for favorable outcome. That's pretty much your strategy for this. Uh, kind of feels like this was a uh, Wolf Fire's, uh, like, side chick, and they kind of treated it like that. Kind of like a project somebody was working on for nine years, and all of a sudden was told, hey, put a bow on and ship it. And they're like, <gasps> okay, it's not done yet. Here it is, 30 bucks. Um, and that's a shame. It really is genuinely a shame, because I can see there was some love for this. There was a vision for this game. There was a story they were trying to tell, a world they were trying to to flesh out hell it might have even had fun to be had but they cocked up and shipped a nine-year-old hobby project that is hair bones at best i did that i'm sorry i, got, I told you i was trying to be entertaining it's still a better love story than carmageddon but what we got is mostly an empty fucking game with sloppy ass controls the laziest, minimum, I'm not going to say lazy. I don't think it was lazy. This is just unfinished. The work that went into it was all right. But like the fucking cutscenes, dialogue, text only, the story, if you can call it that, empty ass nothing to do. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. And the fighting system, just go fuck yourself. That it, it doesn't work. And under any circumstances, it's ridiculous. And uh, the ragdoll physics are entertaining. And the controls are hilarious until you have to do anything. So, yeah, uh, save your... Don't even spend $10 on this in the Humble Bundle. I bought it twice. Uh, we'll be giving away a copy next week. Stay tuned. One chip. Yeah, I mean, Lugaroo was kind of charming in the sort of like, there's no games on Linux, so hey, there's an indie developed 3D beat-em-up game sort of way. And Lugaroo was fine for what it was. Um, but Overgrowth doesn't really expand it on the formula in any real significant way, especially to justify the $30 price tag. Um, yeah, there's it's still it's still a lot of uh, drop kick your way to victory. Uh, most weapon attacks will kill you in one shot, so you got to duck, duck, dodge, keep Dude, your distance. Okay. And I'm sorry. It's random. Sometimes it's one mm -hmm. shot, and sometimes it's not. Same way with killing enemies. Sometimes it takes um, a couple of swings. Sometimes you barely yeah. boop them with a sword, and they die. Usually, usually, like the 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 bigger weapons will kill you in one hit. I've noticed that. Like knives, maybe you get two or three, but yeah. Oh, and what about uh, the jump foot kick? Once you figure that out, everything just dies. Oh yeah, no, yeah, that, that's that's the drop kick your way to victory, right? Like that's you you the the, the 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 game tries to encourage you to like stealth your way through and take out enemies one at a time because like you cannot engage more than like three people at once without just getting overwhelmed by action economy, like Pedro is seeing right now. Um... But yeah, like the, the if if like the the the, the combat in Lugary was really cool looking, and if they figured out a way to expand it and like make it feel like I'm actually doing this stuff as opposed to like fucking dipping and dodging and running away and hoping that the wind up frames for my roundhouse kick are faster than the wind up frames for their knife stab, um, <laughs> it it, it might have been good, but I don't I, I I don't know, and like the story isn't anything special either, and like. 
this is the laziest way to fucking communicate it, right? Like, at least some games that do this sort of thing will dispatch it and give you, like, character portraits. And at least that puts me in the mindset of, okay, I have to, like, sit down and read dialogue. This is not done particularly well. And they give you a thing that's like, hey, if you want to skip all of this, just hit the start button or whatever. So I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. skip. <laughs> I rebound that to A so that I could just mash through it normally. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I was really just hoping that there would be something here to justify the $30 price tag, and Brad, there, there, there just isn't. It is a fancier-looking Lugaroo. Um, it doesn't look like they've made any sort of progress in the combat system beyond what they had already. And, I mean, I, I didn't really notice it in first until I saw um, Pedro's mention, but yeah, like, there's some really cool architecture in the levels, but it's very empty, and I think that has to do with the fact that the combat system is so jacked that they can only throw a couple enemies at you at a time. And that makes the levels very, very short and kind of unsatisfying. So I'm going to give it one chair. I was I was disappointed with it. I wanted to like the overgrowth, but no. It's, it's yeah. And I guess the review did run long enough for you to see the graphical glitches I was mentioning. See, I wasn't actually seeing that in-game proper, it's just when I looked at the recordings, like, oh, okay. It's the Swamp so of I... Sorrows! Atreus horse yeah. is in there! <laughs> so I went back and fighter? I tried to do a different recording with using, instead of NVENC, using X264. The exact same thing happened, so... Clearly, something is wrong with this game. But the big question here is, is it fun? And, well, is it's certainly funny. Yeah, the ragdoll physics and when you die, it's absolutely hilarious. But actually playing the game and as I was succeeding and actually making progress through the levels, I found myself wanting to keep going. But when I stopped, I didn't really feel the need to go back in. There are those games that'll, you know, make you uh, really want to start at them up over and over again. Because even though you put the game down, there's always something in the back of your head going, you should play some more. But this one doesn't do that. As someone who likes the exploration aspect in games and with a game with a map as open as big, uh, and as big as this one, you'd expect there to be something but there isn't. There's the one path you need to take, and that's it. It's... you go to that place, or you go to the place that has a little lantern on it, as you can see in the video here, after I stop screwing up and dying all the time. But yeah, that's the path you need to take, and that's the only place that there's anything in the way of gameplay. So it's... It's kind of empty. The whole game just feels kind of empty. No, uh, you know, no digs that uh, are empty. But yeah. The cutscenes, yeah, like Jordan already mentioned, they're absolutely bare bones. It's the bare minimum effort to call something a cutscene and deliver some bit of dialogue or story or plot or whatever you want to call it. It's. I'm just glad that they give you the skip button. Just hit start to skip it all. And there you go. The button presses, Ven's already mentioned this, uh, they sometimes outright just don't register. And uh, in combat, that's because there's a stagger thing. There's a bit of a stagger mechanic in the combat. And you don't really have any feedback as to when your character is staggered. So just hitting the attack button, your character doesn't attack. So what the fuck? It's because he's staggered. There isn't any visual indication to that, and that's really annoying. So as far as I'm concerned, there is a lot of potential here, and I did want to, you know, progress, do more and more stuff in it, just not enough to keep going back to it. So, two chairs. Yeah. Yeah, this game is a lot of... I, th I think I think the, 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 the core synopsis here is there is a lot of wasted potential and a very, mm -hmm. very offsetting, off-putting price tag. <sighs> Uh, back to it. We all wanted this to be good. Um, I think yes. Lance Nero corrected me. It's been 11 years in development. It seems like it really was a ho hobby is the wrong word, but a side project. And there's about 30 minutes of game. I mean, the textures aren't lazily done. Uh, the camera work. There's a lot of attempts at stuff. It just doesn't gel and plus it looks old as balls now we used to say as a running joke before this game was finally released kind of surprisingly mm -hmm. we're like what it's ready now all of a sudden 
that we remembered when this game looked good. Mm -hmm. Comparatively yeah. to what was being shipped on Linux, we're like, holy shit, this thing looks awesome. I think that was pre-Shadow of Hodor. Yes. All right. Also, that bunny just exploded, and that was kind of funny. That happens. All right. Yeah. Coming <laughs> up next, we got one little bit of hate mail for you, and then we are gone. You'll never see us again. Hooray. It's about time we wrap up the show and not uh, Game of Who, but uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly that we're doing right now. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> It's been a big show, bigger than we originally intended, but, uh, well, that certainly gives you a lot more possibilities to send us some hate mail. And you can do that very easily by going to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button and you fill out the form. It's uh, as easy as it can be. Just, you know, keep in mind if you're a game developer and you'd like us to talk about your game, you kind of need to send us three keys at least or, you know, a build that we can share amongst all of us. Sound good? Good. So, this week we have Free Jack. It's been a bit yeah, quiet he's lately. About, he's talking about big picture mode and... Uh... Yeah, he says, I have seen discussions on this subject that goes back as far as 2013, according to Discord, who does not hear us right now, apparently. When your game, whether in Steam or crossover, Lutris to play on Linux or Wine, if you're using a controller and hit the buttons just right with Steam open in the background, big picture opens, takes over your display. The discussions have been brought up to allow a way to completely disable the picture mode, basically because it is not being used in these environments. Valve has yet to address this issue. It has been six years. There is no kill switch to completely disable this mode. It is always ion the background. <laughs> Your thoughts, words of wisdom, or just out flames. Dot 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 dot. Love free Jack. Well, the yeah, the big one is you kill native Linux Steam while you're playing wine games from outside Proton or any game that's not on Steam. You just kill it and it'll go away. That was pretty much the only way I found to stop that until an update came along that worked for me. And it actually lets you stop that. If you go into big picture mode in the general controller settings, I think you can do that through the desktop mode now. But you just need to untick the guide button focuses steam option and it should stop this behavior. At least it did for me. So I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Uh is it fixed now though is that safe to say no if you, if you if if, if 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 i were if i were to hit this button i would still summon big picture mode i wish that i actually do kind of wish there was a way to shut it off but at the same time i kind of like being able to be like i want to play i want to just especially on the tv box that's kind of the main situation there is like i want to bring up steam hit the button on the controller and away i go hmm it's a yeah. shame. i mean for me if i hit the uh little playstation button on the dual shock it just does nothing oh it brings a big picture for me but mm -hmm. not anymore because that has gone missing Aww. and now i don't have it anymore wow wow <laughs> hey if you got any um thoughts hints allegations or things left unsaid send them our way it'll be brilliant it'll be awesome and we will respond you can always hit us uh leave us comments on youtube and all that no guarantees we'll get to them not because we're being mean it's just hard to sort through when you have six years worth of videos Keep yeah. that in mind. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, on that bombshell, let's cue the music. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. What we're doing this nightmare trade, it runs a four-hour rock block. And I want to thank everybody for showing up live and joining in. After the fact, you can always check the uh, Patreon, where we have the uncut version available for you the next morning. If you want to get hold of me, I'm at Ben Stone somewhere. Hang on, do I have a little thing? Uh, giggity. Uh, do I have another little thing? There we go, we can use the old one. Vinstone, uh, at Vinstone on the Twitter nets, and that's about it. Or at Vinstone on mass.linuxgamecast.com Yeah, I'm Jordan. You can see me talking all about my little things at The Burning Fool on Twitter, plus Jordan's fun on Google Plus until April 1st. And at Mastodon at Frojo at our mass.linuxgamecast.com By the way, yeah, uh, the YouTube guys cannot hear any of this. Hi, live ah. stream. <laughs> I, I, I went and checked. <laughs> I am a little thing as a whole, so you can always find me at unaccounted4 on Twitter, or yeah, just go to Twitter. It's the easiest way to do it. If you're on Discord, just ping me there. It's fine. 
Yeah. You are a little you are a little <laughs> thing asshole, Pedro. You are. Be yes. quiet, big asshole. That that's what I said. Uh, gaping <laughs> asshole then. <laughs> gaping. Fine. Whatever. <laughs> And everyone immediately jumped to the LCC lives like, we can't hear. <laughs> but but, but what, about, what about Mega Ultra Chicken? Shh, it's only legend. It's only legend. Yeah, I don't know what went on. Maybe OBS just died. I can't, like, desync uh, well, and like, resync Jack. Well, I could, but I'm not going to risk fucking up our local recording. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you call it? I, I went and scrubbed back. The audio is fine. It, it just kind of stops. So, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's being recorded fine then. So that, that, that kind of that matter thing. And I don't want to break that because I know that's working. Mm. Thank you, everyone, for reporting it, though. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. And thank you, everyone, for supporting this little train of insanity, what we have going on. It's a big on. train of insanity. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, God, for not existing, because otherwise we'd all probably be burning in hell. Which God also it, doesn't exist. Frank. Never bring up Frank. the G word. <laughs> Frank, listen, listen, man. I get that you're a very religious person, but I am not, and you gotta respect me. <laughs> or I'll slap you in your big fucking skeleton head. <laughs> Obey my Frank. Don't be skeletus. Dynify everyone. We'll see you next week. Five dudes.